Hello and welcome to Newsfeed, your daily dose of what people are talking about online, from news stories to what's trending. As this year comes to an end, a lot of major events, some not so positive, may come to mind. The ongoing conflict in Ukraine, floods in Pakistan, violent protests in Iran, the death of Queen Elizabeth II, a global recession and famine only skim the surface. But it wasn't all doom and gloom, as there's always some room for good news. Now let's take a journey through this year's most inspiring and uplifting stories that you might have missed. The climate crisis came into sharper focus in 2022. Encouragingly, there were signs of progress. The world's second largest emitter, the US, approved legislation to boost decarbonization. The EU set a 55% target to reduce emissions. Investment in renewables surged. One of the most significant environmental agreements in history, the Global Plastic Treaty, was adopted. And scientists predict the hole in the ozone layer will close in the next 50 years. Yay! In the 1980s, scientists discovered a hole in the ozone layer. This hole was created by a gas called CFC. If this continued, the gas would have completely destroyed the ozone layer. So 200 countries met up and agreed to stop making or using this type of gas. And guess what? It worked. CFCs are no longer in use. And the ozone hole went from this to this. The problem was fixed because the countries came together. When we all agree on the science, when we all come together, we can fix the ozone layer and we can fix the entire planet. We end the year with news of countries striking a deal to return lands to nature and indigenous people. Europe returned hundreds of rivers to their original free-flowing state by removing a record number of dams. Brazil pledged to halt deforestation and revive the Amazon Fund. In the U.S., a redwood forest was handed back to the descendants of indig indigenous tribes. Although the list of endangered animals continues to grow, some species bounce back from the brink, proving that extinction is not inevitable. Notable success stories include fin whales, tigers, bison, pelicans, and rhinos. Rhinos have been extinct in Zanar for many years, at least 60 or 70 years, and we're basically seeing a return of rhinos to that area. They're important to the ecosystem. We're hoping that translocations like this going forward will maybe save or, or certainly make a difference in the numbers of rhinos in, in the world, and we hope that 10 years from now there will be a thriving population of uh, white rhinos and Cancer rates have fallen substantially globally, with Rwanda saying it is on track to become the first country to eliminate cervical cancer. All thanks to scientists developing sophisticated methods and better tools for detecting and treating the disease. Researchers have also managed to cure a teenager with what was thought to be incurable leukemia and a woman with HIV. And reports show that COVID-19 vaccines prevented almost 20 million deaths this year. A cancer drug just cured cancer for everyone who has taken it. So drug is currently undergoing clinical trials. And so far, everyone who has participated in a clinical trial involving the drug has been cured of their cancer. This is a huge cancer breakthrough, but let me tell you a bit more. It's a type of immune checkpoint inhibitor, so instead of attacking the cancer itself, it gets the person's immune system to do the work. It's still a miracle because in a very small trial of 18 people, all their cancers vanished without chemotherapy, radiation or surgery. We now need to see this in a bigger trial that's more diverse and with longer follow-up, but it's groundbreaking. Thanks to scientists and vaccines indeed, because after two years of closures and postponements, concert halls, stadiums, theaters and galleries finally welcome audiences. Some lucky fans got a chance to see their favorite artists in person or their digital versions after decades. That's right, I'm talking about the ABBA tour. And speaking of music, a 95-year-old woman, Angela Alvarez, became the oldest person to be nominated and win the Best New Artist Prize at the Latin Grammys. Living proof that it's never too late to follow your dreams. I have always loved music, and I was blessed that my husband loved it when I was singing. And in terms of strides in women's rights, the U.S. might have overturned Roe v. Wade, ending the constitutional right to abortion. But countries like Malta and Sierra Leone went the other way. 
Ketanji Brown Jackson became the first black woman on the U.S. Supreme Court. England launched its women's health strategy to close the gender health gap. While in the U.S., a historic agreement closed the pay gap between women's and men's football teams. Women scored other notable victories on the pitch, too. The Euro 2022 final between England and Germany netted the largest TV audience for a women's match in U.K. history. A female referee officiated a game in the Men's World Cup for the first time, and the women in Iran were named the Times Heroes of the Year. All right, something else that we can't shut up about in 2022, Twitter. Its rivals are thriving since Elon Musk took over the company. And this doesn't come as a surprise since many users were already looking for alternatives to replace the platform. Dubbed the hell site by many netizens, people seem to think Twitter was already full of negativity and Musk's leadership just added more fuel to the fire. Cue the exodus to Mastodon. The platform has been around for a couple of years but remained niche due to its nature. Now there are more than 2.5 million active users across Mastodon's over 8,000 servers. You could call it a Twitter alternative, but instead of tweets, you post what are called toots. You can also follow other accounts as well as favorite and boost people's posts. The difference is that Mastodon is a decentralized network. That means it's not a single platform, but a collection of thousands of independent servers. These servers are based on factors like geographic location, interests, or professional background. If you sign up, you'll need to register on a specific server. But you can join as many servers as you want and leave or switch servers at any time. Posts are limited to 500 characters, and like Twitter, you can include links, images, audio files, and videos. And here's a huge perk, you can edit posts too. Any server Mastodon links to from its server picker has to commit to a server covenant, and that includes active moderation against racism, sexism. Okay, that kind of sounds like we're going back to the online forum era in a more complicated way. So, will Mastodon's differences be enough to transform it to become the new Twitter, or can it even be the new Twitter? Authors don't think that Twitter is worth replicating. The general principle of both platforms is the same, an internet public square where people can share their thoughts and relatively short posts. And I think that in and of itself, it's good and useful to have something like that on the internet. However, Twitter as a big and centralized platform also has huge operational costs and thus has to resort to dirty tricks to keep itself profitable, which it failed to do. In 16 years of its existence, Twitter never managed to turn a profit. Most of Twitter's profit comes from running ads on the timeline, and in order to stay advertiser-friendly, all content on the platform has to be moderated. With a platform that size, this means that Twitter has to invest a lot into human moderators as well as automated moderation tools, and those things aren't cheap. Mastodon, on the other hand, doesn't have those problems. Even the largest Mastodon instance, Mastodon.social, has a relatively small user base, so running and moderating a small instance for you and your friends is relatively cheap. Is Mastodon ever going to become as big as Twitter? Maybe not, but that's okay. This might sound a bit cheesy, but instead of becoming the new Twitter, Mastodon users are trying to create a better social media. A social media that's not driven by greed or profit or attention, but instead just gives people a decentralized, sustainable, and scalable platform to communicate with each other online, which is what social media is supposed to do in the first place. What sums up 2022 more than our collective Google search history? It's a time capsule into the zeitgeist. Well, here's what sparked interest on Google in the past 12 months. What started as random green and yellow boxes popping up on your Twitter feed ended being the most popular search on Google in 2022. I'm of course referring to the viral game Wordle that had, ho that had a hold on many of us this year. Next was the World Cup semi-final cricket match between India and England, and obviously the war in Ukraine that has affected millions in one way or another, and the death of Queen Elizabeth, who reigned for more than seven decades. And as many expected, the person who sparked most curiosity was Hollywood celeb Johnny Depp. The defamation case between Depp and his ex-wife Amber Heard had tongues wagging and interest peaked. Who can forget when Will Smith slapped Chris Rock at the Oscars? I, for one, am guilty of talking about it more than necessary and Googling it more than necessary. And of course, Russian President Vladimir Putin, the attack on Ukraine threw him into the spotlight even more than in previous years. Gone are the days when we watch something without research and reading some reviews. 
the most Googled show was HBO's Euphoria, followed by The House of the Dragon from the same stable. Marvel's Moon Knight was the third most popular. I haven't seen that one yet, but the TikToks I've come across online are uh, very interesting to say the least. And guess which fashion brand was most searched on Google this year? Was it controversy-ridden Balenciaga, fast fashion favorite Zara, or its competitor H&M? Nope, it was Shein. The Chinese fast fashion brand has attracted a lot of controversy in the past year for its terrible work conditions, unethical business practices, and enormous environmental impact. But Google says Shein was the most searched brand in 113 countries in 2022, so despite the controversy, millions are still buying stuff from the brand. Take a look through TikTok and the platform is full of Shein content, whether it is endless hauls and try-ons or the controversy surrounding the brand. Drama aside, Shein's appeal is its extremely low prices as many shoppers grapple with rising costs. So while some actively try to avoid fast fashion and focus on sustainability, it's a luxury not everyone can afford. The online retailer recently announced it'll spend $15 million upgrading its hundreds of factories in China after a Channel 4 documentary exposes harsh working conditions. Some staff were found working 75-hour weeks, only taking two to three days off a month. All right, this year was an interesting one for the silver screen. Box office revenues are in decline, even though people are back in cinemas as pandemic restrictions ease. 2022 has shown that the way audiences consume entertainment has changed drastically. Instead of a nice outing to the nearby movie theater, more people have been watching their favorite flicks in the comfort of their own homes. So the film industry has bounced back, just not in a way that's filling up cinema seats. And as 2022 readies to take its final bow, Ali Jan takes us through which films were a hit this year and which ones got two thumbs down. Okay, let's get down to business. 2022 was not a great year for movies. There were quite a few disappointments. You know, if you're a horror movie fan, Halloween let you down. If you're a romantic comedy fan, Marry Me let you down. But there were quite a few good ones in there as well. Good morning, aviators. And critics say Top Gun Merrick was the cream of the crop. And we're off. Now, that movie had big shoes to fill, following in the footsteps of Tony Scott's original. And the thing is, it was delayed for three years because of the pandemic. Now, that should have worked against the movie, but what happened is it actually allowed anticipation to build even more. In the end, the movie became a box office jaggernaut and a critical hit. Someone's not coming back from this. Now, my pick for this year would be Klondike. It's not a spectacle movie, but its strength lies in its director's talents. Marina Ergorbach's sense of the camera, her style of editing, and the acting in it is just great. You know, I can describe it as, like if you were to take the camera angles of Orson Welles and took, you know, John Cassavetes' actor direction and it's mixed so them together, style. you would have Klondike. It's that good. Now, carrying on to the bad ones. This year, critics singled out Blonde, the Marilyn Monroe biopic as the worst picture of the year. Marilyn Monroe. See, the thing is, Marilyn Monroe in real life was the victim of the men in her life. And reviews say the movie actually fixated on that fact, and by doing so, victimized Marilyn Monroe's legacy even further, making it a, kind of like a misogynist film. You're supposed to get used to it. Now, my pick for worst movie of the year would be Elvis, another biopic. And the thing is, it's more of a style over substance movie. And actually, one review even called it a three hour long movie train. I wish to promote you, Mr. Presley. The thing is, though, they're right. You know, the fragmented narrative style prevents the movie from telling an actual story. Moving on to our the movie that made the biggest splash online category, there's really only one candidate, and it's Morbius. Michael Morbius. Discover who you are. 
this Marvel flick had the worst social media reaction of all time. It was ridiculed from all angles that it's not even funny. You know, there was no fanfare. That meant nobody showed up at the theaters. You know, that affected its box office performance. And even the direction of the film was a laughing stock. In the end, it was the talk of the town for all the wrong reasons. Now, you might ask, well, what about those people who didn't show up to see Morbius? They probably were at home watching Netflix. And that's another thing. In 2022, the COVID pandemic restrictions were lifted. And Top Gun actually brought audiences back to theaters. But the thing is, the period between uh, theatrical runs and home entertainment and online release is so short these days that sometimes people go, well, you know, rather than going to the movie plex, I'll just wait for a month and watch it at home. And that's a big problem for the cinemas and for the companies. And the thing is, at the moment, nobody knows if that will change in 2023. That was our very own cinephile Ali Jan wrapping up 2022 in movies. And that's our show for today. See you same time tomorrow.